I'm the queen of gossip, Cindy Adams. I'm Michael Musto, and you're watching the king of gossip, The Barry Z Show. Welcome to the Barry Z Show. Tonight, my special guest hostess, or host, is Michael Musto, right? Special needs? What are you talking about? Um, and I brought the Golden Girls with me. All four of them. This is Sophia. This is whatever. And they are in perpetuity. This is probably a bootleg. No, I would never wear a bootleg. This is an authorized Golden Girls sweater. It's my favorite show. Thank you for being a friend. It's not on. It hasn't been on for months because when you approach the holiday season and after, they sub uh, they don't sublet it. They what do you call it? <laughs> when they replace the show with like with a hiatus. Yeah, like hiatal hernia with with Hallmark movies basically. Oh. So every night at eleven, when I usually have my Golden Girls, there's something with Marky Post, who I love. But I mean, come on. So this is my way of dealing by making them part of my very being. I see B. How are you, Arthur? B. Arthur is Dorothy. She's my favorite golden girl. Is she why? Because she's caustic. She has a, a way with a put down and a slow burn. But basically, she's got heart and shoulder pads, and she's a good substitute teacher. Did you learn anything from her? I learned from watching the show how to read your friends, but in a loving manner. Because growing up, my family, we didn't talk that much, but when we did, it was a lot of zingers. It was like a friar's roast. And I learned that a zinger could be a term of endearment. If you only kind of zing somebody if you care enough about them to do so. Bianca Del Rio, she's the famous insult comic, the drag queen. Right. She's not going to read you if she doesn't think you're if you don't she doesn't think you're worth it. She doesn't just pick people at random and start reading them. That's true. Now I have a question for you. Why do you find the Golden Girls so delightful, or one of your best shows of all time? Enough to wear a sweater on them. To me, I like a show where it's a family and they're flawed people and they're openly flawed, but they come together as a family in all their differences and they create a unit. When B. Arthur left the show, remember she married Leslie Nielsen on the show? Oh, yeah. That was the end. They came back as Golden Palace and it wasn't good anymore because B. Arthur was gone. If Rue McClanahan, Betty White, or, or Estelle uh, Getty had left, the same thing would have happened. You needed all four of them. And that's why my number one show of all time is the Mary Tyler Moore show, because that's a bunch of flawed people who really create a family. And they're egomaniacs, narcissists, insecure, wonderful, loving, wise, all. It's all in there. The slut, the bitch. And they're fabulous. And they love each other. And you love them. <laughs> can turn the world on with her smile Who can take a nothing day And suddenly make it all seem worthwhile Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it With each glance and every little movement you show it Love is all around, no need to waste it You can have the devil, why don't you take it Make it after all. 
Should we talk about current things instead of just old nostalgia? What's the question? Were all these scripts improved? No, the scripts for Golden Girls were written, and they were among the best written scripts ever. And they actually wanted Elaine Stritch to play Dorothy, and she came to a table read or a meeting with the producers, and she said, this is one of the worst written scripts I've ever read, and they sent her out the door. She could have had, now in perpetuity, after her death, she still would have been making royalties. Wow. And what she was, was stupid. Like Elaine Stritch was genius, but in this case, she was stupid because it's a brilliantly written show. What was your second question? Can we talk about something current? Because I'm tired of being like Mr. Yes. Mr. Nostalgia. You lead the conversation. Okay. You must have great gossip for us. Well, I wrote a piece for The Voice, which when this airs will already be out, because I'm back at The Village Voice. They have a new owner, Pete Barbie, uh, and it's all new, 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 and nice again. Is it also gay, gay, gay? It's so gay. You turn gay just by op opening the, the, ah. the cover to the front page. And I wrote a piece about culture in the age of Donald Trump. What is culture going to be? I think it's going to be a schlock. I think it's going to be SpongeBob mu musicals on ice. And <laughs> the big movie now is called La La Land. It's going to win all the awards. And it's a musical with Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling. And it's very cliche. It's all about live your dream and all these hopeless cliches. A, a bit banal with some moments of enchantment. But basically, Ryan Gosling plays a jazz musician who plays with John Legend's character. John Legend wow. acts in the movie. And that's considered a sellout because he really wants to open a jazz club. Here's to the ones who dream Foolish as they may seem Here's to the hearts that to the mess we make She captured a feeling Sky with no ceiling The sun set inside a frame Here's to the ones who dream Foolish as they may seem New York, New York. It's almost a homage to that as well as to Gene Kelly, Judy Garland movies and the Jacques Demy movies. Remember The Umbrellas of Cherbourg, oh, yeah. The Young Girls of Rochefort. Oh, classic movies. And Rochefort is a cheese as well. <laughs> you learn a lot here on the Barry Z Show. You do, don't you? Thanks to Michael Musto. But Kate Blanchet, I mean, you know her? Kate Blanchet? Oh, of course. She's good. She, she, what a, yeah, Kate Blanchett. She's on Broadway right now. Oh. God, and I'm going to see it. It's called The Present, and it's an adaptation of Chekhov's first play set in Russia, but they have Australian accents, and it's modern dress. But I hear that she's marvelous. I was like, Kate Blanchet, you must go. It's $144 a ticket. Wow. <laughs> and it's three hours long, and the old ladies sit there like, wait a minute, they have Australian accents. Why? Oh my God, three but hours. fuck them. Just fuck them. If they can't get it, if they can't get art and check off and Kate Blanchet, you don't deserve to go on Broadway. Go and see your Harry Potter and your, squ your Square Pob, Square Pants, and your fucking Charlie and the Chocolate Cheese Factory. There we go. Is it a two-character play? It's two characters in the leads. It's an ensemble. Oh. But it's Kate Blanchet and Richard Roxbury. He's her male co-star. Wow. And he is in a movie called Lion with Nicole Kidman. And that, that's a movie with Dev Patel. Oh. He's an Indian boy who runs away, or he's lost from his family. And when he grows up and becomes Dev Patel, he's adopted by Nicole Kidman and Richard Roxbury. Wow. And Nicole Kidman's going to get nominated because she plays this wonderful mother who just wants to change lives. She's like a flawless person. It's a very moving film. Let's uh, start with where you're from. Calcutta. Which part? I'm adopted. I'm not really Indian. I'm starting to remember. Saru, you're a beautiful boy. You're very proud of yourself. A life I'd forgotten. Are you okay? I had another family. A mother. A brother. I can still see their faces. 
इधर जा मत मैं कल का काम निपट के आ जाऊंगा गुड्डू गुड्डू I need you, Saru. What if you do find home and they're not even there? And you just keep searching. I don't have a choice. What was she like? Beautiful. Every night I imagine that I'm walking those streets home, and I know every single step of the way. And a whisper in her ear. I'm here. So you have La La Land, you have Moonlight, which is the gay black coming of age movie. Wow. I'm sure you've seen it. Yeah. And um <laughs> Then you have Manchester by the Sea, which is by Kenneth Lonergan, and that's with Casey Affleck. He's going to win Best Actor. And that's a family drama where he inherits his brother's son as a sort of mentor slash Svengali situation. And Michelle Williams is great. Um, Viola Davis and Denzel Washington are in Fences, and that's a movie version of the August Wilson play. Denzel Washington directed. Denzel Washington's going to produce every August Wilson play as a movie. And he's starting with Fences. And he's going to do Ma Rainey, Two Trains Running, Jitney, you name it. The entire body of work. Ma uh, Rainey's Black Bottom? Oh, my God. What was that? Was that the name of the show? You never heard of it? You didn't get the memo? Yeah. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Yeah. Remember they did it with Whoopsie Goldberg? Yeah, Whoopsie. And, and I think it would be a great movie with Octavia Spencer. Wow. Have you heard of her? No. Who's that? Okay. Never mind. Okay. She won the Oscar for The Help. Remember The Help? Where the, oh, The Help. Wow. You probably actually do have a black maid. No, no, no. I filled the position. You clean your own apartment? Yes. How did you know? They called well, me. Well, at least you can't uh, put cocky duty in your, in your rhubarb pie. <laughs> or do you? No. I skipped that. But that takes care of Broadway, and that yeah. takes care of the movies, right? The movies. Okay, we did Broadway, we did movies. What are we leaving out? Let's talk about the state of New York City. Now, oh boy. guess what is, first, first of all, what just closed was G Lounge. What? Yes. G Lounge closed? Do it again with a feeling. G Lounge closed? Oh, oh. my God. Do you have your Nembutal? Let me Wait see. That was on 19th Street, no? It was in Chelsea, but Chelsea's not the gay mecca anymore. Remember, Chelsea was in the 90s, the gay mecca, when you had G Lounge and Barracuda and all this stuff going on. It's all over. There's still Barracuda for old drunks yeah, and occasional drag show, and there's still boxers, and there's gym bar, and that's pretty much about it. It's all about Hell's Kitchen, which is where we are now. This is the gay mecca. Why They're, is it shifting? Because the gays migrate. The gays travel in packs. They're, they're basically sheep. Wow. They're, they're sheep who take it up the ass. Oh, my God. And basically, years ago, they started, they, like I'm not one of them, started migrating to Hell's Kitchen. And, that you know, you have Atlas Bar, you have Hardware, you have a million bars in Hell's Kitchen, probably almost 15, 20 bars. Each one has a drag show. Each one has a Broadway night, et cetera, et cetera. And one of them has that tall gay night, right? The tall, tall gay agenda. What are you talking about? There's a tall gay agenda group that has a night at one of those bars. I'm tall. Should I go there? Yes. What agenda. do I get? No, no. What's do the they name? have a gift bag? Yeah. <laughs> agenda. Agenda. No, not agenda. Uh, what is it called? Is it called agenda? The Prisoner of Zenda? No, no. What is it called? 
That, what is what called? That gay bar in uh, this is like Hong Kong, Kong in Hell's Kitchen that uh, they have the tall night there. Oh, God. Uh, okay, they let you out of the home tonight? Yeah, they did. You're not really making a lot of sense, no, so but what's, uh, if you did, I'd be worried. Uh-oh. So what's that <laughs> bar that... Um, who goes there? That guy from uh, that gay show, talk show. What's his name? He's a co-host. He's a host. He's a... What's his name? Andy something. Right. Andy something, who's a host... Yeah, you know goes to that thing with the tall agenda. It's all making perfect sense, Barry. Holy shit. Nurse, nurse. No, no. Ding, 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 ding. ding. Andy, what's his name? It's time for your meds. <laughs> Andy Warhol. Anyway. No, no, Andy something. Uh, the gays still go to the village. I'm just going to no, pretend you're not even talking. Oh, you're just Kelly. distracting, Barry, with... Oh, uh, well, Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper goes there. His well, his husband owns it. It's called Atlas Bar. I mentioned that. Yeah, I mentioned that earlier. His husband, Ben Massani, owns it, as well as owning uh, a bar in the East Village called... Um, it's where they had My Chiffon is Wet. You remember My Chiffon is Wet. Eastern Block. <laughs> that's it. And that's a fun bar. Yeah. And so there is still life in the East Village, and there still is gay life is. in the West Village. And who is the uh, correspondent, the TV correspondent, who has his own show on Lifetime? Andy Cohen? Yeah, Andy Cohen. No, it's on Bravo. It's on Bravo. He's the programming director of Bravo, and he has Watch What Happens Live. And he also goes to that. And party. here's a. I went to a party the other night for a new Real Housewife, and I'm not, I can't say who it is, but it's somebody who was on another reality show years ago, and she's sort of a downtowny type person. She's fun. So Real Housewives of New York is going to have new life in it. Wow. And it was a party at R. Corey Hayes' house. Do you know him? I like anybody with initial yeah, R. I Corey. I like F. Murray Abraham, and I love S. Apatha Murkison. I call her S, and I call Jaja just Ja. What does the F stand for? We were that close. He told me once. Fuck you, asshole. Exactly. So what about Jaja? I'm very yeah. upset. I heard she died 17 years ago, and the husband kept her quiet. He was collecting her Social Security. Are you serious? Well, uh, no, I'm sure he loved her. Oh, my God. But she was the original Kim Kardashian. And, Jaja? And she was married to Jaja. She was married to Conrad Hilton, who was the great grandfather of Paris Hilton? So there is a connection with the fifteen minute celebrities. Wasn't but, she on Green Acres? No, that's her sister Ava, or was it Magda, or was it uh, Jolie? No, they all look alike. Well, they were sisters like the Kardashians, and they promoted themselves as sisters. Wow. But guess what? Guess who turned down? Not me, but guess who turned down Green Acres? Who? Jaja. Oh, that's how okay. Ava got the part. Ava was not the first choice. Oh wow! So Jaja could have collected royalties for the rest of her life. Okay. Instead of just doing the Merv Griffin show. But, you know, you make your bed in wait, showbiz and you lay in it. Well, you, you lay with pigs. But wait a minute. But then guess who Merv married was Ava Gabor. So it all comes together. Married? He was gay. And well, you know. And Jaja was bitter that Merv and Ava were taking private planes everywhere. And Jaja was crying poverty. It's oh It was very sad. God. She was 99. Oh, God bless her. Who was Which her husband? Is, the Count Von Countless or something. Some The no, no, the no account count. But meanwhile, Kirk Douglas is 100. He's one of the oldest celebrities in the world. Oh, he's still around. He's still around. He's 100. He will not drop dead. But he could talk. Well, from the side of his mouth. But, you know, whatever. All he has to do is ask the nurse for a new diaper. Wow. But he's a legend. He's a Hollywood legend from the old days. And he's really one of the oldest. You know who the oldest celebrity is, though? She's 106. Ooh. Her name is Lupita Tovar. She's the mother of Susan Conner. Susan Conner was the daughter in Imitation of Life. And Susan Conner was married to John Whites, the designer. Oh. And their sons are the Whites brothers who did American Pie. So that family is quite amazing. And Lupita is 106. Kirk Douglas is only 100. He was like in knee pants when Lupita was already getting married. Wow. Can he still get it up at that age? I can. Well, thanks to Bob Dole, we all know now about Viagra and Cialis. Oh, and Bob Dylan? Dole. Oh. He's the Viagra commercial, you know. Yeah, what about Bob Dylan? Bob Dylan is one of my favorite Jewish people. And um, Thank you. every Hanukkah, I think of him. Just like every, every Christmas, I think. Christmas has passed now. But what the songs I hear the most every year are Brenda Lee and Darlene Love. And I love hearing Darlene Love because she's still around and I hope she's collecting royalties because for years she was getting shafted. Wow. There was an Oscar winning documentary, 45 Seconds from uh, Stardom, about Darlene Love and other people like did that. Did she do the song from Shaft? No, she did Superfly. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Got to Yeah. 
But she was basically scrubbing toilets when she heard her records uh, in the 80s. She heard her records on the radio and said, I should be getting royalties for this. And it's like, yeah, you should. And she did. You know who else heard her music on the air? I don't know which air it was, but I mean, it was on some air. I don't know, dentist air, whatever. But um, no, she heard it in a bathroom, in a men's bathroom, while she was cleaning the toilet. Evelyn Champagne King. Shame. Well, you have the story a little fucked up. But the reality is she was singing in a bathroom, according to legend, and a record executive came in and heard her, and he signed her. I don't know if I believe all that. That's like Lana Turner was discovered at Shafts or... Shafts. What was it? The, whatever the... Shrafts. Sipping on ice cream Sunday in between killing mobsters. But um, wow. basically, here's something else, Barry. The David Barton gym has closed. Wait a minute, look. I know, it's like Home Alone. Like, what are you going to do now? Why? It's all over. No business. People either, they're fucking at some other gym. They're lubing up at some other gym. Or they're just working out at home. I can't figure it out. But David Barton has a gym called Temple. But no no vowels. Vanna White. T-M-P-L. They need Vanna to buy a vowel that was Tumpu. And that's still open. That's, he was the hottest gay gym in New York. No, years. but he still has the Temple. His, his name was still on David Barton gyms, but he wasn't involved anymore. He had been sort of ousted. He he left. He opened wow. Temple. The David Barton gym is now bye bye. That's at the Slime Light. You it know, was supposed to be everything, you know, and everything under the sun. Remember, he had the one at the YMCA, and then he had the Slime Light. They're all gone. Yeah, he was Slime Light. He was gay, straight, bi, wasn't he? He was everything. He's he was married to Suzanne Borscht, who's a famous Borscht, party promoter. Yeah, I remember. She, the, oh, they're the Borscht. No, but they have a son named Bailey who's very smart. He goes to college. Wow. And they were one of the most fabulous New York families. They still are. And um, David Barton pioneered the idea of a gym as a party. In other words, you weren't going to sweat. He wasn't gay or was he? Everybody's a little bit gay. Except me. I'm a lot bit gay. Every, you know. So I don't understand. If he was a little bit gay, then how could he marry Suzanne Bosch? Bosch. Have, you, have you seen her? No. Thank you. Okay. She looks like a drag queen. So they're fabulous. They're very Barnum and Bailey, and they're eccentric. And but they're, they're not married anymore. No, but you're still a family because you share a son, and they care about their son. Is the son gay? I don't know. Oh. Probably. <laughs> well, anyway, but um, most people are. So that was an institution that's gone. And what did you think of the hairspray on TV? Speaking of gay, because oh, horrible. That was the worst. I liked TV it. Musical. TV musical I've ever seen. Why do you say that? You didn't like Miss uh, Firestone's? Miss Firestone is old. Okay, and what's the problem with that? And Christian Chenoweth is, I don't know. Anorexic? Anorexic or? Well, I love them. They're the, oh, they're the heart and soul of what Broadway means to America. No? What happened to them? I just interviewed Craig Bierko. Wasn't he married to Christian Chenoweth? No, you don't even know. She was she was with uh, Mark. Uh, oh, that guy from Beauty and the Beast. No, no, not Beauty. Yeah, and Mark something. They were in the apple tree together. He was the snake, and his name was uh, Mark Kudish. Mark yeah, Kudish. Kudish was in Beauty and the Beast. He played the. Um, He's been in a lot of shows. He's talented, but they didn't get along after a while. He was too much. I asked her about it. She said, "Well, he was talking only about showbiz. He it was just he was focused on the career." Oh, they weren't interested in sex. And ironically, she got the career. But meanwhile, I thought she was cute in Hairspray. I liked Ariana Grande. I liked seeing Rosie O'Donnell as a gym teacher. That was a stretch. How do you spell gym? G-I-M or G-Y-M? J-I-M. Oh. In my case. Okay. So anyway, so um, you're a bon vivant, aren't you? Mr. Nightlife. What is that? Well, I mean, you're all over the place. Oh, you mean horse manure? Yeah. <laughs> Is that what bon vivant means? Yeah. No, yeah, no, I am no, everywhere. No. I'm In fact, after this, I want to go to Flaming Saddles or something and just go to some bar and watch people do a two-step. How do you manage to do all this? How do you achieve all this energy? I just got chills down my spine because you reminded me of the woman in Mommy Dearest. Can we cut to a clip? When Marlon Brando's sister, Jocelyn, plays Barbara from Red Book. And you miss Crawford. How do you do? Having it all. How do you do it? Barbara, please. And then there's the whole, why did you adopt me? Check it out. Great movie. Then she strangles her, no? Why do you deliberately defy me? Why did you tell her I got expelled? Because you did get expelled. That is a lie. <clears throat> you love it, don't you? 
You love to make me hit you. Joan. Barbara, please. Please, Barbara. Leave us alone, Barbara. If you need anything, ask Carol Ann. It's wonderful. It is wonderful. You, you deliberately embarrassed me in front of a reporter. A reporter? I told you how important this is to me. I told you. Why did you adopt me? What? Why did you adopt me? I wanted someone to love. Don't you act for me. I want to know. Why did you adopt me? Maybe I did it for a little extra publicity. Tina, that's not true. You know that's not true. Maybe just a little true. I don't know what to do with you. I don't know what to do with you. Why not? I don't ask much from you, girl. Why can't you give me the respect that I'm entitled to? Why can't you treat me the way I would be treated by any stranger on the street? Because I am not one of your fans! And guess what? Faye Dunaway is writing a book. Finally, she's she, Faye Dunaway does not want to deal with Mommy Dearest. In her mind, it killed her career. She found it embarrassing. She thought it was edited horribly and marketed like a joke. She has a point, but I still think it's a genius film, and she was brilliant in it. She was brilliant. But she's finally coming to terms with it. My guess is so she can make some money because she probably needs money. She didn't get an Academy Award for that. She should have. She should have. She got a Golden Razzie, but she should have gotten the Oscar. She was incredible, yeah. Wow. No one could have topped that performance. And it was all real, right? It was all true? I, To me, I'm watching Joan Crawford when I watch that movie. I don't know if it's all true because Christina Crawford had a breakdown watching it, so I guess it was a bit over the top. But I think Joan was abusive, obviously. She was not a good mother. She was warped in her ideals. And, and her shoulder pads were just ridiculous. Oh my God. And what were the favorite lines from that movie again? You know them better than me. Why can't I get the simple respect from you I get from any stranger on the street? Because I'm not one of your fans. And what was the other one? Oh, the other one? Every line is a gem. Don't dresses. fuck with me, fellas. This ain't my first time at the rodeo. $300 dresses on wire hangers. And you put them on wire hangers. <laughs> wire hangers. Why? Tina, bring me the axe. Were those lines really quoted uh, by Joan Crawford? The axe line, I think, maybe not, but definitely when she says, Helga, I'm mad at the dirt, not at you. That was, that was, that was documentary realness. I interviewed Christina Crawford one time, and I said, were these embellished? She said, of course they were. Well, she had a breakdown when she saw the movie. She said it was so over the top. But the book is pretty over the top. The reality of her life was over the top. Joan Crawford was cuckoo crazy. She was nuts. She was a maniac, but she was a good actress and a great movie star. She loved her fans. She just didn't care for her children.
Children? But they weren't her children. Well, Barry, newsflash, if you adopt children, they're yours. They, it really counts. One, two, you're, three. You're still with like a tranny man. <laughs> you know, they're transgender. And if they're male to female, they're female. And who should we talk about in the trans world? Uh, yeah, who should we? Are there any people left? RuPaul? No. RuPaul is a drag queen. That's different. Yeah, I'm sorry. She sissies that walk. But basically, Caitlyn Jenner's star fell this year. She didn't really become the topic of a, like last year. She still has a dick. So how could she be a trans? You, must you lower every conversation to that gutter level? No, but how could she be a woman if, if she has a man part or an instrument? Uh, because your gender has nothing to do with your genitals. Absolutely nothing. And in the old days, they say pre-op and post-op. We don't say that anymore because you don't have to get the op if you don't want to. The op is the operation. I miss that lesson. And if you do get the op eventually, it doesn't matter. Either way, you're, if you're female to female, you're female. If you're female to male, you're male. Eventually, I don't even think they'll say male to female or trans. They're just going to say male or female. Because why should we have to specify somebody as trans? Why not just say Laverne Cox is a woman? Why does everyone have to ask about her genitals? Well, it's demeaning. It's part of being a woman. Nobody says, oh, nice to meet you, Liam Neeson. So tell me about your genitals. You're a man, so you have uh, genitals, huh? He does have a huge one, I heard. Actually, he does have a big one. Yeah, they do ask him about it. So that was a bad example. So anyway, uh, one goes with the other, no? Well, it goes with it, but it should be just... Who cares? Like, I, who cares if you have genitals? Who cares if you don't have genitals? Who cares if you have every genital? But you're either a complete man or a complete woman. No, there's a spectrum, Barry. There's all kinds of different types of men and women, and in between, everything. There's middle sex. The, don't forget about middle. You always forget about middle sex. What is it? I don't know, but you always forget about it. Anyway, spectrum. Funny you mentioned that I word. That. I mean, that word came from a fabulous disco in Bay Ridge. Is it still there? Well, that was the one where Saturday Night Fever was based on. Uh -huh. And that's my neighborhood. I grew up in Bensonhurst. So that I was near there, but I never went until years later when it was a straight. Or no, it was sort of a gayish disco. But Spectrum I like because they replaced Time Warner. They bought Time Warner. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was afraid they're going to raise the bill, and it's the same price. So I don't know if that means they're not raising the bill the whole year. But in any case, I love Spectrum. They're doing very I nice. they were going to be bought out by AT&T. What happened? No, they were bought by Spectrum. The ones I hate are Verizon. Why? I think they have the worst customer service. Oh. And as for health insurance, what are you on? I'm on Blue Cross now. I'm on everything. <laughs> well, it's not working. But... Um, this year, I got a letter from United, which is what I was on, and they said, we're discontinuing all individual plans. You must reschedule with someone else by December something. United Airlines? I had like two days notice to call Blue Cross and try to register with them, and it was a nightmare of paperwork and you, you know red Why? tape. Why? What happened there? You start uh, logging on online, and halfway through the login, there's some problem where they don't identify you they don't your uh, social security doesn't match your address or whatever you're not medicare right and i'm sagittarius and that didn't match my mother's maiden name or my first pet you're not medicare you're too young i'm not that far from medicare i hate to tell you oh, okay. 20 so, 20 years okay and anyway so what else are you doing with yourself these days or you know something what else are you doing with yourselves these days why do you say that because there's so many of you Oh, I thought you were implying I was paranoid schizophrenic, which I am. <laughs> um, I'm also on the Logo Show. It's called, and I just oh. had dinner with a co-star of mine from the Logo Ooh. Show, Drew Drogi, and you should interview him, Barry. What's he? He does a show. We are on a show called Cocktails and Classics. Neely, you know it's bad to take liquor with those pills. Shut up. Too bad, <laughs> Too bad nobody <laughs> told that to Judy Garland. So Judy Garland was supposed to play Helen Lawson in she the film. She recorded I'll Plant My Own Tree, and it, duh, it's very good. Then she did costume tests and everything. Yes. So why didn't she end up being in the film? They, they fired her, right? Because she was Judy Garland. She was a bit of a mess. What's crazy is that the character of Neely O'Hara is kind of based on Judy, right? 
right? Totally based on Judy, and I can totally. top that. You know who Jacqueline Suzanne wanted to play? Neely O'Hara based on Judy? Liza. Oh my God. Liza Minnelli, oh my Judy's God. daughter. Imagine. So guess what? It would have been Judy playing Helen Lawson based on Ethel Merman, supposedly. Okay. Wow. Battling it out with Neely, played by Judy's real life daughter, Liza Minnelli. Oh my. So ripping off. I would have paid for that. Judy was, was fired after her wardrobe test, and what did she do? But she take walked the out wardrobe. with the wardrobe. Oh, oh, she took okay. the wardrobe. And then she yes. wore it later in shows, like in concerts. She would yes. just wear it. But she always said, you know what? She said that that's in my contract. And, you know, oh. she she in a way was Helen Lawson. Oh, I guess that's oh, fair. I then. cannot wait Elaine to Stritch get there. Elaine Stritch used to do that. I can't that. wait. Wait a minute. Wait a following. I'm doing all of that. Uh-huh. The pills, the booze. I'm taking all this wardrobe. The stealing and then the act. Uh-huh. As on, brilliant as Judy was, I don't think she was right for Helen Lawson. Helen is not sympathetic. Judy never played an unsympathetic character in her life. And Helen, you know, fires Neely because she's too talented and right, she's very right. bitter and kind of uh, insecure. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm glad in a way that Judy didn't get to play the part. I would have just loved to see Judy Garland doing the musical numbers though. Yeah. It would have been fantastic. Here we go, here we go. Oh. It's Michael Yuri is the host and producer. Cocktails. And well, you can't say it without cock and tails, yeah. And we watch movies like Valley of the Dolls, Mommy Dearest, Baby Jane, and we talk about it and we have fun. And Drew Drogi is a comedian who is on the show and he's an actor and playwright. And he's in a show right now called Bright Colors and Bold Patterns. It's at the Barrow Street. And I really recommend you run down and see it and interview him. Do you want to? I want to go down right now, can I? You can, you He's can finishing the show now, oh. but I could take, well, no, that's, I'll, I'll make it next right. time, but he's doing 12 more shows. Wow. Is he gorgeous? He's very cute. Okay. So what else? What are you doing with your um, new husband? I heard you married. Well, then I go on theater talk and we talk about Broadway. It's always me, Patrick Pacheco, and Jesse Green, and then the hosts are Susan Haskins and Michael Riedel. Oh. And he's doing very well. He wrote a book called Razzle Dazzle, and it was option to do a um, miniseries. Really? What happened? It's they're doing it, and uh, Iris Sachs, I think, is uh, oh no, Doug, Doug somebody is producing, and then another friend of mine is named Tim Murphy. He writes for the New York Times. He wrote a novel called Christadora about the AIDS activism days of the '90s, and that's been optioned by Iris Sachs for a miniseries. So that's the way to go now is miniseries because there's so many channels like Amazon and Hulu and Bulu. Wow. Do you even watch these Amazon in the Jungle, Mozart in the uh, Jungle, what, Kimmy Schmidt? What are these things? Kimmy. No, but uh, but what about uh, Michael Riedel? What happened to her? him? I mean, he's doing very well. He wrote a book, and they optioned his book for a miniseries. Is he gay and or? Now, he, I don't know. He's a theater queen, and they uh, he's writing another book about Broadway. So he's become one of the historians of Broadway, which is very important. Does he have that show? Theater talked. Theater talk. He's the co-host. Oh, talked. No, it talks now, and he's the co-host with Susan Haskins. She's actually the producer. It's her show, Susan Haskins. Are they making any money? They're hanging by a thread, but they always manage to get the money together to do that show, which is wonderful because we have such a good time talking about the Broadway season. What do you think about the Broadway season? I think it's interesting this year because you have Dear Evan Hansen, you have Bronx Tale, Falsettos, you have Cats one more time, Now and Forever. So you have the old, you have the new, you have the schlock, you have, you know. Willy Wonka. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Mark Shaman, and Scott Whitman. And they also have written a sequel to Mary Poppins as a movie, and that's with Lin-Manuel Miranda and Emily Blunt. Wow. So that'll be coming out. And then there's a live-action Beauty and the Beast movie by Bill Condon, who did Chicago, Dreamgirls, and Sideshow. Condom? Yeah, Condom. Yeah, okay. It's the first time you ever said that word. He sprung to life. Condom? Yeah, anyway, Stella. No, I thought you said Bill Condom. Condon with an N. Oh. It's Condon with an N, not Condon with an M, because Condon with an M goes, mm, not mm. What about your performance situation? I'm doing very well, and Sweetie is, ha- you know Sweetie? Of course, I love her. She's having a big 50, 50- she's a big drag star. 50 what? 51st birthday party at Highland Ballroom. It's in January something. And I'm going to be one of the MCs along with Daniel Nardiccio, Chichi uh, Valente, oh, yeah. and Sandra Bernhardt's performing Justin Vivian Bond, who I call Justin Vivian Vance. Are you going to be jumping out of the cake? Um, Sweetie's going to make sure that the cake is all gone before we even hit the stage. Yeah. There's not going to be I'm any so cake. I'm proud of you. You're sweet. Thank you. And I like performing. I like getting up and MC. I, I can sing like a motherfucker. And can we buy your albums if we want to go to the store and get it? Oh. You can go on YouTube. Just look up Michael Musto. Look up Michael Musto sings My Way. You'll see me in the 80s, the Palladium singing My Way. And it's quite moving. Frankie. 
Or if you go on my Facebook page, you might be able to see different videos of me. Wow, you look fabulous. How do you do it? Vitamin E and monkey gland injections. Really? Yes. And, you know, I go to Gestalt basically every two weeks. Gestalt? Yes. What's that? It was a concentration camp, but now it's a fabulous chateau. Well, how do you keep yourself so flowery and liquid and watery and moist? I drink a lot and it just kind of leaks. Now, you remember the old gay scene, just like I do. And what is your theory of all this? My theory is things have changed in the detail, but in the overall picture, they haven't changed at all. In other words, in the old days, you would go to a gay place like the International Stud, and it was a cluster fuck. You walked in, everybody was fucking and sucking. Nowadays, you go, oh, there's AIDS, there's this, there's that, there's gay marriage, nobody's fucking and sucking. Bullshit. They're just doing it on Grindr. And now you say, well, there isn't nightlife anymore. There used to be nightclubs and dancing and blah, blah. So what? Now there's so many bars that if you put them all together, there'd be a very large dance club if you put them together. And it's there's still nightlife. There's still sex, fucking drugs, all the things that make the gay culture. But what about Michael Muster, who's head of the gay culture, right? I mean, you wrote books. You wrote plays. You did cabaret shows. You played instruments. Well, the, oh, 10 inches, no? I've done it. I played the viola in the All City High School Orchestra. I've acted in plays. I've done so many appearances. And now there's talk of someone is going to round up a celebrity roast of Michael Musto. And it's going to be a benefit for AIDS. Oh. And uh, well, I, I want to get people like Rosie O'Donnell, Harvey Firestein to just get up there and rip me, yeah. to, rip me a new one. Can I say something? You can, but you won't. Okay, good. We're, we're trying for bigger names. I'm sorry. Okay. Will I ever be a big name? Not at this rate. <laughs> How much money will it take? No, 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 but seriously. Um, the good old days. Remember the good old days? If you remember them, then you weren't there. Oh, the Michael Musto or Musto. They were must birthday parties that you threw. I used oh. to have these incredible birthday parties, and I would have a scandal star as the guest of honor. John Wayne Bobbitt, he's the one the wife chopped his penis off when he was being abusive. Can he still get it up? He couldn't before. No. Divine Brown, she was the prostitute you Grant was caught with. Yeah. Uh, I had Mrs. Fletcher, she's the one I've fallen and I can't get up. I had Sucrete Gable, who testified against her mother. I had Brooke Shields, Julius Sweeney, oh my God. Um, Zora Lampert from Goya Beans. I had Zelda Rubenstein from Poltergeist. You name it, I had parties for them at the Limelight, the Palladium, the Tunnel. Wow, who else did you have? Or did you want to have? Oh, my God. I had Barbara Eden. I had Donna Douglas. Oh, my God. Is she still alive, Donna Douglas? I believe so. Oh, I'm not wow. sure. She what was about Arnold the Pig? He was, too, he was too expensive. Oh, he was? Yeah. Wow, the good old days. So we just went with Babe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very nice. So, and what about the movies you've been in that I could take you home in right now? Oh, my God. I Am Divine, Resident Alien, um, Making the Boys. Uh, Florent, queen of the uh, meat market. The lady in question is Charles Bush. So many movies. Slaves of New York, Garbo Talks. Wow. It's the Smurfs movie. The Smurfs movie? Yeah. Who'd you play in that? Myself. You played with yourself? You have to really freeze frame it to catch it, but oh my it's God. in there. It's in there. Wow, somewhere. So I, don't, I got the check. I don't give a shit. Wow. You're all over the place. <laughs> Like horse manure or crabgrass. Well, let me ask you something. Do you owe your success and your your fame to your agent? I don't have an agent. And when I did, all they wanted to do was bilk me for money that they didn't even earn. So, no, I owe nothing to any agent at all. They never got me diddly squat. Yeah, yeah. I owe everything to myself and to the people that helped me, like my editors, my fellow writers, and other inspirations who have been absolutely wonderful to me. How come you never had your own talk show? I don't want it, just like I don't want my own country house. I would rather be a guest where I go for the weekend and can mess up the house and just leave gotcha. and say, go fuck yourself. And similarly, I'd rather be a guest star on a talk show and just come be a guest, which I've been on, Craig Ferguson's show, uh, Letterman, and so on. Saturday Night Live imitated me twice. Who played you? Mark McKinney. Wow. I'd rather do that than honestly have my own show where there's that much of an onus that's a big word, look it up. But like for, for seven or eight years, I was a guest on the Keith Overman show, Countdown with Keith Overman. Oh, wow. That was easier than being Keith Overman, though he was making like $38 million a year and I was making shit. Not even a lollipop wow. in the green. You're the center of attraction. 
<laughs> you end up getting a nice amount of attention. You really do. Uh-huh. I'm not complaining about the a level of attention I get. I get a nice recognition level whereas it's not intrusive it's not i'm not madonna i'm not lady gaga where you can't go out in public yeah but I they're would. in and out like a light switch no yeah yeah madonna's in and out it's been 40 years now yeah she and good for her she gave a speech recently at the billboard live women in music awards really? And she gave a wonderful speech complaining about the way women are treated in show business and how they're objectified they're shamed for their sexuality and they're try men try to control them and put them down. And Did she, she ever say that it took her twenty years to get where she is? No, it only took her like two years. Really? She made it big pretty quickly. She slept with everyone in New York. Good. And she was really good in bed. And uh, That's what I heard. and she's been on top ever since, literally. Wow. Straddling people. Now let me ask you something. Not only have you had um, all these movies that you've starred in, but what about all these books you've written? Well, I've written four books. The first one was called Downtown, which was a guide nonfiction to the downtown nightlife, fashion, music scene. Then I wrote Manhattan on the Rocks, which was a Romana Clef based on the downtown scene where I took apart all the different personalities and had myself as the protagonist and or the antihero. And then I wrote two collections, uh, La Dolce Musto, Writings by the World's Most Outrageous Columnist, and Fork on the Left, Knife in the Back. And those were easy. You just put your best columns together and say, here, print these. Oh, these were from your articles in The Voice. This old shit. I just paper clipped them together. You would know this more than anyone else, okay? And I don't have to get a big magnifying glass to track this down. All I have to do is go to you. Was uh, Joan Rivers killed? Well, no, it wasn't intentional murder. No, no, that would have been a hell of a lawsuit. But it was quite possibly negligence. I see. And it was a routine procedure she was going through to look for nodes or something like that. It, was, it wasn't even plastic surgery. It, so it, talk about some, somebody in political office had her extinguished. Oh, and who would that be? Donald Trump? <laughs> no, but... Uh, I don't think Joan was a threat to anybody. Everyone loved her. Even if she attacked you, you, she, you loved her because she was she so... attacked the uh, she was so funny. current presidential administration. The great thing about Joan is she, the nature of her humor was not that enlightened in that she would put down women if they weren't skinny, didn't have a husband, didn't have a big wedding ring. It was, it was all really reactionary stuff. Uh-huh. However, she was so hilarious about it, you just went along with it. Even if she made fun of Christina Onassis for being hairy, Liz Taylor for being fat, Joan Rivers was hilarious. Her delivery was just priceless. You could not be offended by her. What about her making fun of 9-11? Well, she waited, and she her remarks were not against 9-11 uh, victims, I don't believe. It's not like Ann Coulter, who is serious. That's much more offensive when an Ann Coulter seriously starts attacking 9-11 widows. And she also attacked the presidential administration. Ann Coulter or Joan Rivers? Joan Rivers. Well, this is a democracy. You're allowed to to discuss uh, politics and critique the, you know, that's what we do. Look at Facebook. We do it all day long. Joan Rivers did not attack the Trump administration. She died before he was even a candidate. So I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Oh. Well, um, <laughs> they made fun of the Donald Trump administration from Stephen Colbert to every other comedian. Well, why? why? These shows are comedy. They're satire. They depend upon satirizing current events. That's what they do. Did you not? Be supportive because he is your president. Okay, and if you were in Nazi Germany, would you say the same thing? No. Okay, well, think about it. But uh, he is our president. We have to be supportive of him now. This isn't some... uh, (laughs) This isn't some canasta group at the Hadassah where everyone be supportive of Sophie Gluck. She's the new head of the canasta group. This is a presidency who's affecting lives and is going to demonize people. Uh, you know, LGBT people are going to be in trouble with with rights all over again. This is not some cute thing. Well, let's all get behind our president and go, yay. We, we have to critique from get, day one or we're going to be totally stripped of our rights. And I hate being stripped. As he proven himself to do that, Trump? Yes, he has. Read the Times. Don't just watch Colbert. There's actual real news out there. What about Hillary? Do you feel that she was gypped out of this, out of a presidential nomination or election? Part of me feels that she 
was gypped because they put so much emphasis on that email thing and it was blown so out of proportion. So many of them have done the same thing and she didn't do anything that was charged by the FBI. They let her off the hook. Let's drop that. The, Trump was saying so many more horrifying things than her email thing. No, but um, do you think that Hillary was gypped as far as winning the presidential nomination because of all those emails and what was going on with her personally? I think partly she was gypped because um, they put too much emphasis on the emails. She was cleared by the FBI. A lot of people have done the same thing she did. There was no whose emails were they from? We don't know because thirty thousand of them are gone. But whatever, there was so much emphasis put on that. While Trump was saying way more outrageous things than anything about emails, and it took the balance off of him. He he. The heat of him saying stupid shit was removed by the overemphasis on her emails. That being said, I do think Hillary was not a great candidate. If you can't even beat the joke candidate, which is what Trump was, you're a terrible candidate. And she really had deep flaws. However, obviously, I still was in favor of Hillary over Trump. It, vote for her? I was way in favor of her over Trump. Okay. It's lesser of two evils. And... She was pro LGBT. You know, there were a lot of things about her that made her. Was she LBGT? I don't know. She eats BLT with mayo. Because that was one of the problems I think she was having with a woman by the name of A something, Alberdeen or something. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That that sounds that sounds right. <laughs> You're a great reporter. No, no, no. But you're aware of this, right? That she's married to who? Bill Clinton. He's loyal. No. Why would you assail their marriage? Because they say that she was... He had an incident with an intern and blah, blah, blah. Uh, she had an incident with... Uh, 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 whatever, with you know. W word. You know, marriage is whatever you want to make of it. She's not lesbian. Is Hillary a lesbian? She's Lebanese. Oh, that's what I thought. Okay. But she's not lesbian. Mm, I think she's more Middlesex. I see. You think that cost of the election, her being a lesbian? No. Because Donald Trump is a lesbian as well. I see. He's the oldest president ever, no? Is that right? I don't know. I think so. He yeah. is. Yeah, that's what someone just told me. My cameraman. Older than Barry Goldwater. I thought you said Barry Z. <laughs> you're, you're not president. What happened to Barry Goldwater? He faded into much-deserved oblivion. So what's going on now with The Apprentice? I think Arnold Schwarzenegger is the host, which is oh. like, it's interesting as one TV host goes into politics, the other one goes from politics into TV host, and it's all interchangeable. It's like it's, the host of Celebrity Apprentice is the same as president of the United States. It's just another reality job that pays scale. You know something? You were cheated because you should be one of the uh, correspondents on The View. I agree, or I'd rather be on the other one, which is called The Talk. Because I like Sharon Osbourne and um, the lesbian from Roseanne. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sarah Gilbert. So what happened? And Julie Chen. I don't know how she got the job. Um, She's only married to the guy who owns CBS. Oh, is that right? Okay. No, I'm kidding. I actually like them as a panel. And I like the view. I love Whoopsie Goldberg. And I love... Um, Whoopsie. Well, my friend Rosie is not on anymore. Rosie Perez. What happened to her? They didn't find her up to snuff. Why? Because she wasn't... Uh... They're probably American racist. enough? That's what I think. Yeah, no, I'm serious. They're racist. Those fuckers. Yeah, what about Joy Behar? Behar. We love Joy Behar. She's funny. She's New York. Everyone thinks she's Jewish, but she's Italian. I know. She used to be at my comedy club. So we love the cab fan. A, a hardworking Italian American stand up comic who made it as a TV commentator. We love her. She's one 70 years old. God bless her. I know her. I know her husband. I was on her show on the home. Uh, not home shopping, but HLN. Oh, the home, uh, homo network. No, no it's the uh, headline news network. Oh, yeah. what happened to that? I don't know, but she's back on the View, so the, you know she's better, bigger than ever. Who, Rosie? Joy. We were talking about Joy. Oh, I'm oh sorry. They're, they're all alike, you know. Sophia. We were talking about Joy. Yeah. <laughs> so, what else do you want to share with us? There must be something that you can fill up another fifteen minutes with. Some syphilis. Oh, really? <laughs> Is that fifteen minutes worth? It could last longer than that. That's true, God forbid. 15 anyway. minutes. Well, Andy Andy Warhol said everybody would be famous for 15 minutes, and it came true. Okay, whatever happened to your good old days? There's no more Andy Warhols. Or... Well, newsflash, people do die eventually. Why? God, why? <laughs> well, so they could go join Shirley MacLaine in the afterlife. No, but seriously, what do you want to see in modern-day America? 
I would like to see Martians come and just destroy everything. Okay. Uh, and they could just build condos. Uh, but what about uh, the state of politics? Oh, it's a horrible state. It's New Hampshire. I see. And what about the state of movies? It's horrible because the studios don't even think of making quality anymore. They just want to make money. So they'll do Fast and the Furious Part 9 or Star Wars Part 0. And meanwhile, it's up to the indie companies to come up with the quality films that win the Oscars. So there's a disconnect between the movies that people see and the movies that the critics see. And in the old days, the studios would put up movies like The Lion in Winter, Oliver, Who's Afraid of Virginia? And they were the quality films and they were also the popular films. Oh, yeah, Avco the, Embassy. Yeah. Avco Embassy, Cleopatra. And I remember as a little girl going to see Cleopatra. And it turned me into basically a woman. I started going tits on my back. Oh, really? Yeah. But how do you manage to... I just walk right. like this. I see. So anyway, so what about a relationship? Are you going to ever get oh. married? Oh, was that an offer? Yeah. Would you... Oh, thank you, Barry. Yeah, I'd love to. Would you like one? I'd love... Okay. Yeah, what do I do? I just sit there. Just lay there? That's what I do in bed. That's why I think Bill Cosby would like me, because I just lay there anyway. Is that... An all... it... Wait, a bit bad taste? Wait. Wait a minute. No, no. Doesn't he want to drug you? With me, you don't have to. I just lay there. What about that guy who wrote that book on the Golden Girls? Jim Colucci. He's a friend of mine. He's Frank DeCaro's husband. I heard that. You know, Frank, and Frank DeCaro is the other Italian-American from Brooklyn, like me, the, who's an only child. Is because still living in Brooklyn? most Italians have huge families. All, I have a million cousins, but I'm an Italian-American only child. So is Frank oh. DeCaro. And where are you both living here in New York? He, they moved to California. And we both work for a magazine called CBS Watch Magazine. It's a beautiful, glossy magazine. Oh, I get that. And then I work for Paper Magazine's website, which is called papermag.com. I do blogs for them. I have a weekly column on out.com. It's called Musto the Musical. Wow. I have a column in The Advocate called Michael Musto's Icons. Wow. And uh, what else do I write for? I'm, like, I'm on Logo, Cocktails and Classics. Wow. Classic movies. What else? It's so, I want to be on TCM. That's the old movie channel. And Why don't you I, replace Robert I, Osborne? I love Robert Osborne. I would never replace him. But I'd love to be on with him and talk about Hitchcock or John Ford or Ooh. Frank Capra. Can't you do that I now on Logo? That. I'm on Logo, and I'm thrilled about that. I always wanted to be on Logo because I felt I belonged there. Well, but can't I, you talk about classic movies on that too? No, we do. But I'd also love to be on TCM. Uh, well, they don't cut the movies. For extra money, you know. Yeah. Wow. What else would you like to do for extra um, I'd like to do a musical, maybe ba uh, based on nightlife. That would be fun. You know, I caught you at Don't Tell Mamas a couple of months ago. Tommy Femia. Yeah, yeah. And I just recorded a song, actually, called I Got Your Back. I Got Your Back. Tommy's Back. No, and it's uh, sort of a reggae-influenced pop song, and Tyler Stone wrote it. If you look up Tyler Stone, you should interview him, too. He's a rock star, and he has a band called whatever it is, and David Barton is the drummer in his band. From the gym? Yeah. Oh my God! He's a good drummer. Wow! He How plays. Big are his sticks? Oh, they're gigantic. That's what I heard. Oh, they're. Wow! Is that all you want to say? I said what I want to say a half hour ago. You kept dragging it out. Oh, you do drag too? I'm trans. Do you? Do you do drag, or you never did drag? I've done drag.